going on, everybody? It is April 14th, and we have real basketball again. And judging by uh, when I look to my right, we have some stupid gray fuzz on the screen. So I'm going to correct that right now so that uh, I don't look like an absolute goof for this entire thing. So let's bump that up. Let's bump that back down. And let's move forward. Four games on the slate. NBA basketball is back and it's real. It's no longer the Shaq Harrisons and the R.I.P. Tim Quartermans of the world. It's real, actual basketball that I can talk about. I could not be happier. I have missed this. <sighs> Let's do this. First game on the slate. Golden State Warriors hosting the San Antonio Spurs. 3 o'clock start. Make sure you get your lineups in at that point. Uh, we've got the Warriors. 107 implied total is 4th on the day. Eight point favorites at home. Um, I like the, uh, the Warriors here. I'm a little nervous about this game. I'm not sure how well the Spurs can really hang with them, um, even without Curry. So we've got Durant at 10 uh, 9 on FanDuel, 10 7 on DK. I think that's a nice price. Um, he's not my favorite stud of the day, uh, but I think that he's going to be in a position to really have a nice night. Um, I think that now that we're in the playoffs, particularly playing against the Spurs, um, you know, I'm normally pretty nervous about the Spurs from a defensive point of view, but I think the Warriors, you know, narratively, which I don't generally believe in, Warriors opening up the playoffs, uh, you know, there's been all this talk of them coasting all year. I can see them coming out with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. So I'm anxious to see this game. I'm, I'm thrilled that it's the first game. So I'll likely have a little bit of exposure uh, to Durant. Um, you know, small forward is not necessarily the best spot. So it might end up creeping up higher than I originally expected. We'll find out when I throw everything in the cruncher. Uh Draymond, on the other hand, 7,000 on FanDuel, 7,400 on DK. I absolutely love him on FanDuel tonight. He's going to get the minutes. I'm not really concerned uh, at all about anything going on with him. Like That $7,000 price point is just that's absolutely perfect for me. I'm, I'm completely in on some Draymond. Uh, I don't need a bunch of clay. Uh, I, I guess I would guess my exposure will be relatively limited there. The only guys that I'm really looking at from Golden State are going to be uh, a Durant and, and Draymond. And Draymond will be uh, number one coming out of that for me. Couldn't be happier with that price point. 7000 way too low. Still fine on DK at 7400 But uh, I'm, I'm honestly surprised to see that price be higher on DK, comparatively speaking. go to San Antonio. Uh, Spurs, 99 point implied total. Eighth, dead last of all the four play or four games today. Um, not the biggest fan of the Spurs coming in here. Aldridge at 10-2, 9,700 on DK. I think he's in a, a decent spot. You know, he's going to play as much as he can handle. Um, but I think that... Uh, I think Draymond's going to be a pretty tall order for him today. He's going to have him basically nonstop. Um, not a guy that I really want to pay up for. Uh, he grades out pretty well, um, you know, because of the minutes, but I'm a little worried about the upside there. He's really going to have to carry this team in order to drive them towards any chance of victory. And I, I don't really love it. I don't generally love Aldridge at, uh, at this high price point. Um, and I really don't love it. You know, if the Warriors are going to be turning it back on. Uh, Danny Green is probably one of the better value plays of the day. He's 3,800 on FanDuel. He should see, like, a pretty large allotment of minutes. So he's somebody that I'd be looking at as sort of a value shooting guard if I'm trying to pay up in other spots. You know, you're obviously not going to get any, like, uh, late scratch value plays. So building a lineup is a little bit different. Um, I would like to take advantage of a little bit of uh, Danny Green's minutes. Should play a little bit more, uh, you know, because of defense being so much more important in the playoffs. 
4,400 on DK, not the best. I, I don't have the same sort of feelings for him as I do on DraftKings or on FanDuel. So uh, Danny Green is more of a FanDuel play for me. Uh, don't have much interest in Patty Mills at that price point. Um, the next three guys are interesting. Kyle Anderson, DeJounte Murray, and Rudy Gay. Um, Rudy Gay in particular on DK looks interesting. He's a guy who... I'm expecting to have a bigger role um, during the playoffs. Like I think a, a Murray, Danny Green, Anderson, Gay, Aldridge lineup is very playoffy. You know, long. You know, outside of Aldridge, you know, very, very switchable, uh, long defenders. You know, everybody can can grab everybody else. So I, it's possible we see a lineup that looks a little similar to that. Uh, which makes me interested in gay in uh, in tournament situations. Um, I'm I'm awful at getting Kyle Anderson right. It's a guy with a low usage, picks up a lot of his points from uh, you know the the extra categories, so to speak. Uh, so I'll have some of Kyle Anderson in GPPs, but like the Anderson Murray Gay group are are GPP guys for me. I I can't trust much of those guys in cash. I really wouldn't want any of uh, any of the Spurs in cash outside of Danny Green on FanDuel. I think at 3,800, he can't hurt you too much. Raptors and Wizards. Uh, I'm really excited for this one. I talked about it on the live stream last night um, when we were kind of going over the slate, but I hadn't run any numbers yet, so now I'm just this is all confirmation for me. Raptors, 109.5 implied total, which is second. Um, they are eight-point favorites at home against the Wizards. And Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan have ridiculous prices on FanDuel. Yeah, it's as if they didn't update it off the end of the season. Lowry, 6,800. DeRozan, 7,000. Um, I love them both. They're my two favorite overall plays on the entire slate. I'm going to have a ton of them. Uh, I couldn't be more excited uh, to grab these guys. Only thing to worry about is the fact that the Raptors just blow in the first game of every series. So... Keep that in mind, but it's not going to change anything that I'm doing. I'm running uh, a ton of Lowry and DeRozan lineups tonight. They're fine on DK, 7,300 and 7,600, but uh, the price point on FanDuel is just bonkers. I would have expected them both to be significantly higher than that. They're going to play a ton of minutes. I just, this is what I want for sure. Um, Abaka on DK at 5,100 is reasonable. I don't love it as much at 5,900 on FanDuel. Um... That's not totally for me. Uh, I, I could possibly have a little bit of Van Vliet on uh, FanDuel. I don't really love it too much on DK. But it's gonna a lot of it's going to depend on this first crunch and seeing sort of where any value lines up um, because things are going to be very different positionally. Uh, playoff DFS, particularly in this first round, uh, runs a little bit differently than the regular season because value doesn't necessarily pop up the way you normally think that it does. Love the top two guys of the Raptors tonight, though. Wizards, 101.5 implied total is seventh, um, second worst of the day. We've got Bradley Beal at 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,000 on DK. It's a little bit better on DK, um, not my favorite play of the day. Like, I would much rather have DeRozan. So, I'll be limited in my Beal. Uh, Wall, 9,400 on FanDuel. 8,500 on DK. Uh, I like him on DK at that price point. Um, again, not somebody that I'm going to have an overwhelming majority of just because of how much I like Toronto. Uh, so, I prefer Wall. I'm cool with it. I prefer Wall to Beal for sure. Uh, I'm, I'm a lot more into wall on DK. Otto Porter, uh, you want to keep an eye on his uh, on his health status for the day, but I'm more than okay with um, taking that shot. You'll know if he's playing or not probably before the tip-off of the Golden State game, so uh, feel free to go with some Porter on FanDuel. On DK, not the best price. Um, I'm fine with some Mar Markeith Morris if you need to, 5,500 and 5,200. And... Uh, Obviously, if you get any negative news about Porter, uh, Kelly Oubre is probably going to jump to the top of any sort of value list. So for me, um, on FanDuel at least, I would go Wall, Morris, 
Porter, Buell, and then on DK, Wall, Morris, Beal, Porter. Yeah, but, you know, this is a Toronto game for me. Sixers and Heat. Sixers, six-point favorites at home against the Heat. Back to the playoffs, trusting the process. Number three ranked implied total for the day. No Embiid, unfortunately, um, hoping that they don't need him. Um, we've got Ben Simmons at 10,000, 9,400 on DK. Um, I like him tonight. Uh, I don't normally land on Ben Simmons' side, uh, but I think that he'll see a large allotment of minutes and he should be able to fill up the stat sheet. I have no problem paying up uh, for Simmons on either site. Robert Covington, 7,900 on FanDuel. There's no way I'm paying that price, but at 6,300 on DK, uh, that would be a direction I would go. Uh, I feel sort of similarly about Redick. Not a guy that I can play on D on FanDuel at 6,000. He's a little bit more playable uh, on DK at 5,300. Uh, the guy that I would be looking to play on FanDuel from the squad would be Dario Saric. Uh, not like nothing crazy or anything, but I think 5,700 is an interesting price point. Uh, $700 cheaper on FanDuel than he is on DK, and I can see with Embiid being out, you know, Saric has a chance to uh, establish himself in this playoffs. Uh, he's had some time to, you know, get healthy, so um, as long as his mouth doesn't hurt any longer, uh, he should be good to go. But yeah, my, Simmons is my focus here. Uh, and the Sixers are a little bit more playable on DraftKings. Again, I do worry a little bit about the Heat. They are uh, very good defensively, limiting fantasy points per possession. So it is something to keep in mind there. But third highest implied total for the Sixers. You know, by all accounts, it's second. Um, it's a pretty big gap here, and it's only a quarter of a point from the Raptors. That could move uh, by the time this video is done. So look to Simmons. Look to Covington and Redick on DK. Uh, look to Saric on FanDuel would be my directions. I don't have much interest in Ilyasova, Bellinelli, or Amir. Um, they're just prices are a bit too high for me. For Miami, uh, 103.25 implied total, which is sixth. Uh, this is going to be the spot where you kind of are able to fill out a lineup a little bit better. So Josh Richardson is 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. I like him as a small forward option on FanDuel. Um, a 58, I, I always like getting Richardson 6,000 or under. This makes uh, for a nice case for that. Um, he should get a bunch of minutes. You know, he's on the floor for defense just as much as he is for anything else. So uh, Richardson's a guy that'll probably pop up a bit for me. Dragic, 6,100 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Uh, much more in play for me, again, on FanDuel than on DraftKings. I like that price for a guy that should be uh, playing some pretty heavy minutes. James Johnson's 5,400 on both sites. He's a guy that I'm perfectly okay with having. Um, the only guy that I really have zero interest in is Tyler Johnson. Uh, I think that he might get pinched a bit by the following guy, Dwayne Wade. 4400 on FanDuel, 4900 on DK. That $4,400 point, price point on FanDuel, um, I love Wade in GPPs today. The chances of him sort of exerting his whatever power on the team could show up here. I would expect Wade to see some time in the fourth quarters of these playoff games. I don't think he's going to be able to remove himself from those situations. So at 4,400, uh, Wade is one of my favorite low price guys of the day. And uh, he's going to make up a, a decent amount of my GPP lineups. Whiteside is tricky. He's the, uh, he's the second most expensive center on the slate on FanDuel. 7,000 there, 7,200 on DK. I mean, you're, it's one of two options here. Either Whiteside's going to get a bunch of time or he's going to get very little time um has the tendency to pout and stuff so if it doesn't start off well for him this could spiral negatively uh he's only a gpp play uh you can't go anywhere near him in cash i'll have a little tiny bit of him uh, but i don't have the confidence in him uh in this particular set 
Uh, he's, he's already grumpy. This can only get worse, in my opinion. Final game, uh, Portland Trailblazers hosting the New Orleans Pelicans. 111.5 implied total for the Blazers. They are 5.5 point favorites at home against the Pels. Tons of value to be found here for the Blazers. Uh, we've got Dame at 9,800, 9,200 on DK. Uh, I love Dame here. I love him significantly more than basically everybody but Lowry tonight, and that's just because of a price. Uh, I want to try to get as much of, of Dame as I can. Uh, I'd like to get as much CJ as I can. Pelicans have been just duty against guards all year. I don't get the sense that that's going to uh, just suddenly stop here against you know one of the best backcourts in the league. Evan Turner at 3,500 is going to be a, a very popular play, I would expect, uh, because of his price point. 3,500 and 3,900, uh, he'll allow you to get more studs in your lineup. He's the, with that price and his expected minutes for this sort of game. Um, he's going to be a real popular punt play. Aminu at 4,800, 4,900, another uh, punty ish play that I think could see some popularity. But Nurkic, 8,000 on FanDuel, which is fine. I think he's going to see some extra minutes and, um, you know, might be able to, to, to be a little bit of a bully uh, on the offensive side. I, I, I don't want to go too crazy for Nurkic because I'm just a little nervous about him. But at 6,600 on DraftKings, he's probably going to be one of the most popular plays of the day. To be able to get him at that sort of price point is kind of insane. Uh, I expect people to have a very overwhelming amount of uh, use of Nurkic. Um, love Portland tonight. Love getting a bunch of them. Uh, you know, it's scary to wait that out for the entire day, but their price points are just perfect. And then finally, the New Orleans Pelicans. 106 implied total. I want to get a slurp of coffee in just for the OGs. Delicious. It's delicious when the NBA is back playing real games. AD is 12-5 on FanDuel, 11-3 on DK. I, I don't have any problem paying up the freight. It's just kind of difficult because of the lack of value that's out there, but you have to imagine that AD is going to try to do everything on every possession for the entire game. So I like AD. I just don't know how feasible it is in this four-game set with such little amounts of value out there, but we'll see when we run a crunch how much he pops up. Uh, Drew at 8,700, 7,900 on DK is fine. I, no problems going there. Uh, it's a lot to pay up. Like, I'd much rather have DeRozan at shooting guard than Drew. Uh, but little bits are fine. I'm not really that wild about Miritich. Uh, I just don't see him getting the same sort of looks. He'd have to have a real hot shooting day for me to be, um, for me to be interested. Rondo at 6,100. It's a pretty nice value for him. Um... I'm not well. I know Portland's defense has been been all right this year, you know, better than all right. Uh, but 6,100 for Rondo if he's getting the full, full, full allotment of minutes. Um, you know, he could end up being on the floor for a real long time. Uh, I think he's a good bet to hit value on Fanduel. I don't have much interest in Etan Moore, or Clark, or anything like that. So, Clark as a value play on Fanduel could be fine. Um, he's somebody I might have in the Osimo single game contest on FanDuel. If you go to fanduel.com slash Osimo, uh, it's a single game contest against myself, rest of the uh, uh, writers at Osimo.com, including Osimo, or including Osimo himself. And uh, if you happen to beat him, um, three people that beat him will uh, be randomly chosen for uh, a free entry to an NBA tournament in the future so come check that out come play against us come talk some smack i'm coming to win that stuff um i wanted to make sure i got that plug in i'm really excited for tonight let's go throw this stuff in the optimizer and see where we end up because uh it's been a while since we've been able to talk about basketball and have like real players be a part of it all do I have to crunch her up? Yeah, I do. 
It's been so long. All right, projections are going in. Yeah, yeah, I'm not too worried about Derek Walton tonight, so we won't worry about it. Let's bump up the rando. And let's see what we get. I'm so excited. This is going to be interesting. I haven't looked at this at all yet, so you're getting really raw reactions. Oop. Forgot to switch it to each. You know, some, it's been a while. It's been a while. If you hear that alarm in the background, that's my father's uh, phone alarm because he has to make it sound like a uh, make it sound like a, an actual phone call for some strange reason. I still didn't do it, did I? No, I didn't. A lot of Nurkic, a lot of Evan Turner as expected, Lowry and DeRozan. Um, that all makes sense. I'm surprised by as much Otto Porter there. Uh, I wouldn't have seen that coming. AD gets to 29%, which is interesting. Um, I'm surprised. That, that seems higher than I would have expected. Center really makes me nervous. Uh, I don't see like a real natural place to pay down. I don't love Nurkic all that much at that price point on FanDuel. You know, like I think Valanciunas might be the guy that I lean towards. So I want to go to straight to those three Valanciunas lineups to see where we end up. If I had to take a lineup on here right now, it would probably be... Ooh, I don't know. Probably this one. Lillard, Lowry, DeRozan, Danny Green, Otto Porter, Evan Turner, Simmons, Draymond, and Jonas. Um, that would probably be my, my direction. I, I don't necessarily want to be paying up for Nurkic on FanDuel. I find it a little difficult. I don't love Jonas, or I, d I don't love any of the center options, really. Um, I just don't feel like I have much of a choice. There's so much that I like that it's going to be hard to get to. Like, if I start going towards Wade... Um, I would have to grab Wade. I'd almost have to grab Turner. That might allow me to grab Lowry. You know, that then sends me towards... You know, if we want to take a look at Ben Simmons, we get down to seven lines. It's going to be tricky, man. It's tough to build. I'm anxious to see if any news comes out. Auto Porter will be interesting. Let's check out, uh, let's check out DK. sad that the NBA is almost like actually over but it'll be October soon enough ten percent rando let's let this rip yeah a lot of AD which doesn't surprise me as much on DK and then just an overwhelming amount of the gray teams. <laughs> Lots, that's a ton of Aminu. No, and the Nurkic one makes sense. There's no real other direction to go there. Um, tons of Ben Simmons. A lot of Ian Clark on uh, DK, which is interesting. But, you know, you can only get value from so many places. Top guys on DK for me. Nurkic, Lillard, and Lowry are going to be my first focus, so... Wow. So Lillard seems to be the one that's getting pinched on DK, even though he grades out as well as he does for me. That surprises me. That really surprises me. I guess it's just a price thing. It's really hard to make things work here. So Lillard might be the odd man out. I would go Nurkic right out of the gate, then Kyle Lowry right out of the gate. Um... Since I can't get to Lillard, I would probably look to CJ, which then opens me up for Ben Simmons, and I could look at these. Um, I don't want to have too much Spurs, but I can handle one. Probably Rudy Gay. I just have a weird feeling about Gay tonight. 
Normally I'm not a big gay guy, but R.I.P. Rick Majerus. I would probably be looking in this direction here. Lowry, Turner, Gay, Covington, Nurkic, Simmons, Aminu, McCollum. I don't really love the idea of having four Blazers here. I would probably try to opt out of Aminu in this case. But it's going to take some very specific builds. I'm probably playing bulk lineups tonight, so... It's not something I'll worry about too much. But building a single game lineup or a single uh, entry lineup is going to be tough. Alrighty, guys. That is everything. I, I couldn't be happier to have just talked about that. I'm going to give this one more plug. Go to fanduel.com slash awesomeo. Um, you'll be able to enter, enter uh, a single game. It's just the Pels and Blazers game. You'll be facing off against myself, my live stream co-host Chris Spaggs, uh, my baseball co-host Jake Hari, Osimo himself. Um, you just take us on. Bragging rights. I'm coming for number one. I'm coming for the boss man. Uh, I won't be happy until I take everybody out of this one. It's basketball. It's my, it's my bread and butter. It's what I want. I love you guys. I'm happy to be back. I miss basketball. I miss real basketball. So best of luck tonight. Enjoy the playoffs. I will see you guys tomorrow. Good luck.